Tonight's meeting is held by, thank you. Tonight's meeting is held by American Structure Point, and there will also be people, part, our people here from ODOT. They're going to be able to answer your questions. We have a brief presentation that they're going to give to you, and then as you can see, there are boards all around the room, and they'll give you instructions um, when it comes time for that. But again, I just want to say from the city, thank you for being here and having your voices heard. Um, please, as you listen tonight and you ask questions, be, make, make sure that the things that you're thinking, the questions that you have are asked. This is an opportunity for you to give us, give them feedback, which in turn gives the city feedback. And so we're just opening this up um, for a much needed project for the city of Circle Road. Um, years in the making. And so, again, thank you for being here. I hope that you all have a great evening, and I'm going to turn it over to Mayor Constructor. Thank you, Mayor. My name is Craig Lipper. I'm with American Structure Point, and uh, we're here to talk about the railroad um, great separation project in Circle Road. The format of this meeting is going to be a brief 10 minute meeting, a presentation, and then an open house around the room. So we're going to ask you to hold all questions until the very end, and there will be people around the room that are very happy to talk to you individually around the boards um, located all over the room. Each set of boards are the same, so you don't need to visit each station, um, but you know they're there for uh, talking points to be able to discuss. First, I'd like to identify the project partners. Uh, American Structure Point is the design consultant that performed the preliminary engineering for the project. And of course, with the city of Circleville in cooperation uh, of Ohio Rail Development Commission and the Ohio Department of Transportation. It's the cooperation of these entities that are driving the development of the project. So first, what is a great separation? So an at-grade crossing uh, for a railroad and a roadway, it happens um, on the same surface. So a, as a railroad, as a train comes through, uh, users on the roadway have to stop. They're, they're delayed, the crossing arms go down, and all users uh, are affected on the roadway, pedestrians, bicyclists, uh, vehicles, and emergency responders. The way to remove this conflict is to change the elevation of the road. So that is the grade separation. So there's two options. You can lift the road to go over the railroad, so it's overpass, or you can dip the road underneath the railroad for an underpass. So the existing conditions in the city of Circle Road, um, you can see the railroad in purple. Um, we've identified where the sheriff's department, fire department, hospital, and police are located in the northern part of the city. So during times where the train is used or when there are train stoppages, um, several consecutive intersections can be blocked. So um, this blockage basically separates the north and the south <coughs> part of the city. So this prevents users, including the EMS services, to get to the opposite side of the tracks. And it's for that reason that we think that the railroad is a natural barrier between the north and south parts. Understanding these existing conditions, um, we have developed a purpose and need for the project that we're looking at. I'm going to read this verbatim. This is the only slide I do that on. But the purpose of the project is to improve mobility and to reduce traffic disruptions for the public. And that includes motorists, pedestrians, and emergency responders in the city of Circleville, caused by train delays on the North Pole Southern lines. So it's, it's very important and to emphasize the importance of, of that metric is, is the, uh, the gauge of the success of, of the project and the alternatives that we are evaluating. So from that purpose and need, we have performed preliminary engineering on several different alternatives um, on GIS level base mapping. So um, this is a preliminary engineering effort um, with the information that we have available. So we've looked at existing traffic patterns to see how they would be affected by a grade separation and develop standard roadway characteristics in which we can evaluate the different alternatives that we've looked at. So now in this process, we're at the point where we are engaging the public 
and asking for their feedback and, and the impacts that they <coughs> see for the alternatives that we're laying out. And, and just for transparency, these are the standards that we've used for each alternative. Um, there is a maximum slope that is preferred for the road. There is a bridge length required to accommodate the railroad. There are height requirements above or below the railroad. And there are bridge offsets to accommodate railroad right away. Excuse me. Just me and my old ears. Could you speak up, please? Anybody else agree with me? I can't hear. Yes. 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 Speak yes. up. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you for the comment. Well, this is the part that it, uh, I'll try to speak up the most. I'm sure this is why you're all here. So these are the four alternative locations that we're presenting today. Each of these locations are overpasses. So the great separations go over the, um, the bridges go over the railroad. Several other alternatives were considered, um, but ultimately didn't meet the purpose and need of the project as effectively as these four that we're laying out. It's also important to note that there is a no-build alternative. So that's something that we consider um, addressing the purpose and the need, the purpose and need of the project without making a roadway improvement. So what other ways can we do it without building a bridge? So again, it's important to uh, remember this is preliminary engineering, that not one of these alternatives has been selected as a preferred alternative, and uh, there's no uh, construction schedule or funding. So these are just the alternatives, nothing more. Alternative one is Court Street. Um, the, on this exhibit, north is to your right. The green shading shows the grading limits, so how the dirt will be mounted to help the roadway climb to go over the, over the railroad. Um, in the orange, you have um, possible retaining wall locations that can be incorporated to minimize the impact on some properties. In red, there are homes that uh, will be significantly impacted by construction because of the elevation of the road as it climbs to go about 30 feet in the air. In blue are homes with lesser impacts. Because Court Street is going to be raised, the intersections on Harrison Avenue and Ohio Street would also have to be raised. And Edison Avenue would be converted into a cul-de-sac. Alternative two is one section, one intersection to the east on Pickaway Street. Again, the green shading shows grade limits, how the dirt would be mounted to help the roadway climb. The orange, again, is locations where retaining walls may be able to use, be used to minimize impacts on properties. In red, the uh, homes that will have a significant, will be significantly impacted by the construction. In blue, the homes with lesser impacts. Again, uh, because the street would be raised, the intersection with Ohio Street would also need to be raised. Edison Avenue and Barnes Avenue would be converted to cul-de-sacs, as it wouldn't be feasible to tie them in with the elevation of Pickaway Street as it's climbing. One more intersection to the east is Alternative 3, Washington Street. Again, the green shaded area shows our grading limits, how the dirt will be mounted. This alignment was chosen to be curved so as to minimize uh, residential impacts. In orange, we've identified locations to help uh, minimize impacts. Uh, it gave us the ability to rework Barnes Avenue to be able to um, provide access for the, the houses there. Again, the Ohio Street intersection uh, would have to be raised due to the new elevation of Washington Street. And finally, alternative four is an extension of Progress Parkway. Um, so this is from the Town Street and Progress Parkway intersection uh, as it bends to go um, towards Ohio Street. Um, this alternative was developed to affect uh, residential um, property takes less. Uh, though we certainly do realize that it has a large impact to the business there, healthcare logistics. Uh, the green shows the grade limits here, and we don't an anticipate retaining walls being needed in this location. And ultimately, where Progress Parkway ties back into Ohio Street, there would be a signalized intersection. 
So those are our alternatives. Now is the call to action. So um, we ask that you complete the comment forms that are provided uh, to give us feedback on all alternatives. Uh, we have 30 days from this meeting to turn those in. Uh, the next steps for the design is um, to review these comments, address any additional design considerations that come up based on your comments, and to submit a feasibility study. Again, there's no timeline yet for construction or detailed design work, and there's no project funding yet. So now we're going to transition from this presentation to our open house format. Our breakout session will have many people from ODOT and American Structure Point around the room to answer your questions on an individual basis. Um, there, are breakout, uh, there are boards all around the room for this session. Um, we're excited to continue the conversation with you and we'll be here to address all of your questions. We anticipate being here until at least 7.30 for you. Uh, I appreciate your time and you're free to walk around the room now. Thank you.